Hey guys and welcome to another Talking Mods. Today we're going to go into a subject that I think everybody needs to know about, especially if you're ever going to be buying wheels. Obviously the most important thing is the, the looks, but how are they made and the secrets behind it. To really understand wheels, we're going to go and dive right into that subject. Okay guys, so on today's topic, we are going into a subject that um, I'm often finding myself educating people. Um, a lot of the mod experts who work at Mod Bargains, again, shameless plug, I'm sorry, but um, they're often educating customers and explaining the differences to them. Because if you're looking for wheels right now for your car, or you've been looking for wheels for your car, um, you've probably seen prices all over the place and you you like this design but why is the price this and is it just because of branding and uh, sometimes it is sometimes it is branding right but there's a lot more to it uh, than that and it's actually involved in the manufacturing and the engineering that goes into it so I'm gonna explain that we'll put some videos up if we can for you guys to also kind of visualize it for you we'll go from the least expensive wheels yeah! to the most expensive. The least expensive type of wheel of manufacturing, what's called gravity casted wheels. And there's some more caveats that I'm gonna explain as I explain this. Um, I'm gonna spend a lot of time in this area specifically now, even though it's the cheapest wheel. Um, gravity casted wheel is exactly the way it sounds. We're letting gravity do its work. So there's a mold of whatever the pattern, the design that there is. There's the melted metal aluminum for the wheel and it's poured in and then they let gravity do its work. When you do that, it's obviously air goes into it, there's air bubbles and so forth. And it's very, very porous actually, to be honest with you. That causes usually wheels to be heavy. Why are they heavy? It's because they need to basically meet a certain type of standards. Now all wheels, not all wheels, but they're gonna usually have a type of standard. So if you've ever seen a wheel that has a stamp on it, JWL, which is for Japan's, the VIA, which is for Taiwan, their standards over there for to be on the road. We have DOT here, which is Department of Transportation. And actually the testing is not done by them, it's done by STL here in the US. No kidding. I didn't know that. In Europe, we've got the highest level of standards called TUV. A lot of people don't know about that. If you guys are interested in specifically the topic of how this testing goes, maybe I can do a specific type of test. I've actually got to visit TUV while I was out in Germany. So there's a certain amount of weight that's required for each wheel. Let's say you had a lightweight car like a Lotus or an older vehicle from the 60s and 70s are usually lighter weight. You don't need as much weight in there. But let's say you own a Tesla. Well, that Tesla is extremely heavy. You know, with the dual motors, it's extremely heavy. So you gotta put more and more weight in order to meet the standards needed for that vehicle. So you gotta be careful on what we talk about here manipulation. But gravity cast, the wheels are gonna be the heaviest. And why is that so important, okay? And gravity cast is being the cheapest, right? They're also the ones that are gonna basically, when you take a hit with a gravity cast, the wheel, when it's rolling and it takes a hit, that's the one that's gonna usually just crack. It shatters fairly easily. And they're also the cheapest to make. When Tesla had their wheels, they showed off the crash test and they were, they were raving about how well their crash test did. If you look at it carefully, you can see that the wheel at 30 miles an hour just basically shattered. That means there's, there's no control once that, that accident is happening. The, the wheel just basically shattered. So that's a typical thing that happens with that type of construction. And if it's heavier, well obviously your miles per gallon is being affected, but actually in terms of your handling as an enthusiast, that's even worse. So let's get into that topic, right? What does that mean? Well, this is unsprung weight, right? So this is rotating mass on the wheel. The basic thing that I've seen on the internet, and I have yet to see anybody give me an exact scientific proof. I'm sure there's other multiple variables, but for every one pound of unsprung weight for a vehicle, it equals to 10 pounds. That is actually gonna be a lot as I start to explain these wheels, okay? That one to 10. Now, if you think about it, carbon fiber hood or a lightweight battery or something else to line up the, the vehicle, it makes a big difference to some people, right? Uh, lightweight seats. Hey, I saved 13 pounds by going with this seat. Okay, so. Gravity cast the wheels. Cheapest construction, they shouldn't be expensive. I've seen some companies charge a lot of money for it. They can give crazy warranties because their wheels are so cheap to make, 
it's not a big deal to them. Thankfully, um, in the last 15 years or so, this is starting to go away. Obviously, where wheels are manufactured is always a, a factor as well. And now we're going to go to our second one, low pressure cast. Now, a lot of the factory wheels um, are going to be low pressure cast. How is it working? Well, this is for high volume type of wheels that are being made. And typically, you see that with your standard OEM wheels. And they're, they're using casting as well. How do they control it? It's been, again, we got that melted metal. Um, they're in vats, in two different vats on both sides and you've got the mold in the center. Now they're being fed into it on both sides and then they're going into that mold. Now when you're able to control it, you're able to control that um, that liquid metal and put it into, into there, you're able to have a lot more control. It becomes less porous, less air that's going into it. You're not relying on gravity. Um, there's a lot more control. So now the weight drops a little bit. The wheel is considered stronger in a sense but again Strength is based off of how much you put into it. The cost difference is marginal um, because of the heavy amount of volume that goes into play there. And now when you're casting wheels, they're very expensive, guys. I mean, it's not like it's cheap for these companies to make these molds. So in the, I'm not a wheel manufacturer, but I know what the quotes, I know what they are paying over there in Taiwan and so forth. So if you're thinking about, hey, I'm going to make a wheel mold per size, okay, so if it's a 19 by eight and a half, it's a 19 by 10, you're gonna need two different molds probably because of different concavities and so forth. You're looking at each mold about being 25,000 to $20,000. Oh, I didn't know that. Just think about that, your break even point to get to that is quite a, quite a while. So for the manufacturers, it makes sense. They're producing thousands and thousands of wheels. Cost-wise, it gets, gets close to low pressure, but again, a gra uh, uh, to gravity cast, I mean, but low pressure is gonna be uh, affordable um, in the sense. Now we're going into a, a whole new level here. We're going into flow form. And guys, there's nothing wrong with low pressure and gravity, right? There are still going to be good wheels, but we want to go better on the manufacturing side, right? So now it's flow form or rotary form. This, this one has multiple names and only because multiple people have decided to trademark it recently. Rotary Forge, Spun Forge, and I'll explain the process. There are a million different names um, by people who came into the market after and realized, hey, it wasn't trademarked. Just like Sriracha wasn't like, I guess, trademarked and that's why we see Sriracha everywhere, right? So uh, we see multiple different names for the exact same technology. So just so you're not confused. But the, the thing is, when it first came out, um, it was used a lot in racing and BBS and Advan and those guys had it out there. And when you wanted to buy those wheels, it used to cost about $4,000. You have 60 bucks in entirely? In 2009, when Four Star came out, they really rocked the industry because they came out with flow form, uh, flow form wheels at about a $1,600 price point for us. I'm talking about for a set of 19s. That's a good deal. This really changed things up. The technology with these is a lot better. And I'm gonna explain this a little bit more. So it's still a cast wheel, still has a mold and so forth. The centrifuge, you're taking out the air, right? The air is going out of it. And it's going out and it's coming out of it in bubbles. And all of a sudden you're getting graining. So the same thing happens with the, with the metal at this point. And you're getting it to be a lot more compact. So the metal is becoming so compact, it's almost becoming as good as a single block of metal. That's debatable, we'll get into that as well. So it's becoming more and more compact. And it's also, you know, they, they take it on rollers, they try to make sure that everything, all of it is compressed as much as possible. So now this metal becomes a lot more dense. You don't need as much metal now in order to get to that same point of, of where the wheel can now handle as much weight. So the wheel weight difference for something that is I'm going to use a gravity cast versus a um, flow form wheel, right? Spun forge, whatever, rotary forge, et cetera, et cetera. The difference is going to be probably per, let's say, a 19 inch wheel. I'll use a 19 by 10. On average, what I have seen, this is my personal experience, I've seen an average of about, let's say, five pound difference. Now, five pounds, again, five, uh, one to 10. So let's multiply that by 10, that's 50 pounds, okay? That's 50 pounds of a different on the car versus that, um, that gravity cast of wheel. Keep in mind, we have four wheels on the car, so that's 200 pounds off the car. That's the difference of someone sitting in your car or not sitting in your car, well, a big person sitting in your car, I guess, or not sitting in your car. That's a, that's a considerable amount. When you have someone sitting in your car, you probably are able to feel that. You can definitely, I personally have been able to feel it. 
you guys tell me your own feedback, what you guys think, but you can feel it when you're, when you're steering and stuff like that. Now what happens when one of these wheels gets into a, you know, you get into a wreck or you hit something or a, a cinder block is out on the road or whatever, I don't know. I say cinder block because it's happened to me, uh, where someone dropped a cinder block in the middle of the freeway. Anyway, um, <laughs> that's off topic, but um, what happens? Again, in low pressure and in gravity cast, you end up seeing cracks. You end up seeing cracks form. And I brought this piece of metal here, this um, courtesy of Forge Star. This is back. This is actually from 2009 when they first were making it, and I, they gave me a piece of sample here. Now the wheel itself is a lot thinner. I bent this multiple times, and that's what ends up happening. It, it, it bends. See, when you take a hit to it, and I'm going to hit it, it doesn't crack. It doesn't just snap. It ends up taking this bend. You can see the grain of the metal and see how. Um, and if you were to hold it, you could feel it. One of the easiest ways that we can see that with wheels is we can actually just go up to a wheel and knock on it. You'll hear that hollow difference on a gravity cast or low pressure cast. There'll be a sound difference between low pressure and gravity cast. And then when you touch, you touch the, the, the flow form wheel or rotary forge, whatever you want to call it, you'll sound a lot more dense. Okay, That's the big difference there. And it's a lot more lightweight. Thankfully, prices now for retail price points on flow form have come down. I mean, HRE's um, flow form are in like the 2400 range. Um, so you're looking at about a range about 1500 to about 2500 for the flow form. Low pressure cast within the 1000 to 1500. And gravity cast, I know, are still selling within a 1000, but they should really be around the 800 range, in, in my opinion. So that would explain to you guys the difference on the basic level of pricing. Now, we're going to go to one more step on where the prices get really crazy and you probably know which one I'm talking about. Um, that's going to be forged. Now forged is taking that metal block and it's not going to be a flow for it's, it's that pure metal block, right? Um, it's going to be that metal block and what's happening now is it's getting cut. So there is no melting of it. There is no air going into it. It's already pure. It's already solid. It's as solid as it's going to be and it's being cut according to the design that's needed. So on the CNC level, obviously now you can make multiple designs. You don't need to have a mold, which molds again were expensive. Um, so your cost for a startup is actually very, very low. And like 2009, I probably saw, 2008, I probably saw over a hundred forge companies go out of business. And it's pretty common to see forge companies go out of business because they, they, they might have a couple great designs, but then they just can't keep up with the price point that's needed because there's better alternatives sometimes, oftentimes, for most of us who cannot afford these expensive wheels. If you can afford it, the wheels will go from a certain price point up. And we're talking about from as low as, let's say, 4000 and then they can get up into the 12000 and above. I paid full price for this freak show. That's, that's how high, you, you know, you can see you know, brands like ADB1, which are innovating, will be around twelve to 14000 HRE will be in the $7,000, right? And why is that? There's, inside Forge, there's multiple different reasons. There's, there's monoblock, there's a single, right? One piece monoblock. There is the two piece where you have the barrel itself and then you have the face. So there's two piece and, and then there's this three piece. The center, um, the ring, and you have the, the barrel. I said that right. Anyway. Um, the, why would you want the two-piece or three-piece? Um, basically, if the barrel takes a hit and it gets dented, you could just replace the barrel. Or if the face gets damaged, you can just replace the face. Um, you, can, you can do changes to it. Um, it can be re-put together. It can be taken apart. Um, it can last a long time, number one. Obviously, it comes down to price per value, which one becomes better. In racing, um, we typically see, because they're going through wheels constantly, they're breaking wheels, you're hitting those... Um, you know, those curves are on, on, on the apexes and so forth. Flow form usually is going to be the better, better value. Can you get lighter with Forge? Yeah, you probably will get lighter with Forge. It's going to be close, but Forge is going to be lighter. And you're also paying, so now you got brands, you got branding as well. There's always branding and how well they've marketed it to you guys. There's also the engineering that goes behind it. So those are the four different steps, um, and you can see the differences in price point. I think Flowform right now has hit that nice sweet spot. That's your sweet spot right there.
I think there'll be new innovations in the future. Um, I've heard of talks of different ones, but obviously this never ends. There's different stuff that goes into metals and stuff like that. And there's, if you want to talk about one more, what does Formula One use, if you're wondering? They use magnesium. Um, at that point, it becomes, they're incredibly lightweight, but they are ex incredibly expensive. We're talking about $10,000 a single wheel, not a set here, and if not more. Um, and that price seems to go up uh, only because they're making so few, right? So it's a supply and demand issue. Obviously, they want you want to go for the ones that make sense for you. Most important of all, of all this, it matters is the design. Do you like the design or not? That's what goes into making wheels. So that's the manufacturing side. Obviously, I know that the look is going to be the most important. Um, that's what I base it on, what we all base it on. But I think it's important to understand what the differences are, why your wheels crack, why they bend, and you know, you will bend any wheel, if, especially if your air is low, if you're low on air on your tires. But um, there's differences in qualities. Um, you can bend any wheel, doesn't matter how strong it's been made. Hopefully this kind of shed in some light on the mystery behind it all and explained it. So guys, um, as always, please drop a comment in there. Um, I want to hear your thoughts. Uh, do you think it's worth buying a forged wheel? Um, would you? Um, or have you guys purchased Flowform or you, have you had cracking and what reason? Uh, give me your thoughts and maybe what are your thoughts for the future of like of wheel manufacturing as well? Um, again, if you haven't hit subscribe, please do. If you haven't hit the notification, please do that as well. And guys, I will see you on the next Talking Mods.